today's world insight. Global governance on artificial intelligence, the best ways to guard against misuse without stifling rapid advances and creativity. What is at stake and what will it take to nurture AI with little risk to humanity? Answers from a brilliant panel at the Boal Forum for Asia. Matthias Korman, the Secretary General of the OECD. Dong Chi Hua, a counselor of the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Professor Kyung Nu Li of the Seoul National University. Lu Ching Hui, Chief Security Officer of Vivo. Christopher Thomas, a non resident senior fellow of Brookings Institution. Song Yong Hua, Director of the University of Macau. And Chu Shu Fang, the Dean of the School of Public Policy and Management of Tsinghua University. AI governance do not need more explanation. You all know what it means. And yet, it probably needs all the explanations because we are all looking for ways to reach there. Collective ways, that's what I mean. So with that, we are very glad to be joined by a panel with very different size of the stakeholders. This is a grand topic. And therefore, I think for the very first round, we need to invite everyone to tell us briefly, and the emphasis is on briefly, about which aspect you are looking and examining the issue of AI governance. I think there is already broad, broad consensus in the international community on some of the fundamental principles governing on AI governance, including AI for good, taking a people-centered approach, uh, putting equal emphasis on development and security, as well as respecting international law. The difficult part is how you put these ethical standards and norms into unified regulatory frameworks and interoperable uh, governing mechanisms. And there is obviously a deficit in international global AI governance now. And from China's perspective, uh, last October, Chinese President Xi Jinping announced the Global AI Governance Initiative, which laid out China's position uh, on this uh, and on how to address the deficit, I just wish to stress two points before. Um, first is the urgency of bridging the AI and digital device, and the okay. second is the urgency of establishing an international AI governance structure. Where should we talk about the AI governance? That seems to be what you are emphasizing. Uh, it needs to be an international and multilateral platform. Okay, we're going to go there a bit later. Yeah. Go to you, Mr. Secretary General. Which aspect of the overall AI governance are you looking at? That the OECD, as a, uh, an intergovernmental organization focused on increasing economic and social well-being through good public policy, uh, we have focused on AI as, a, as, a, as, a, as an important area of policy for some time. We were the uh, organization that developed the first intergovernmental standard on using AI in an innovative and trustworthy way back in 2019 and we're currently in the process of um, updating that standard and, and that was also at the foundation of the G20's uh, AI principles which were agreed back in 2019 in Osaka. Now, I mean the challenge that we want to all address effectively is how can we seize all of the benefits, that the undoubted benefits that AI can bring us, but how can we also appropriately uh, manage the downside risks and disruptions. And it, it goes beyond governance. Of course, we all need to focus on uh, appropriate governance arrangements to enable the safe and responsible and ethical and trustworthy development of AI, but we also need to ensure, I mean, there's, there's going to be a very significant disruption uh, coming uh, to the labor market and what does that mean in terms of mm. education and skills development? What does it mean in terms of making sure that people are not left behind, that everyone has the right opportunity to participate and benefit in yeah. the disrupted labor market of the future? So there's a, there's a broad range of policy and governance issues that need to be addressed uh, in, in a rapidly evolving environment and the OECD is focused on, on all of it. Right. So it's not only intergovernance, but also people-centered approach to resolve some of the current challenges. You, using AI to improve as a, a smartphone manufacturer, we are, we are using the AI to improve our the user experience. It's kind of the right thing. But at the same time, we have to 
utilize the AI governance to make sure everything is running right. It's our uh, perspective on how to combine the, the new technology with the governance. Very interesting. This is coming, of course, from a mobile manufacturer. We're going to go into details about these stories a bit later. Thank you. For sure. And let's go to uh, Christopher. Mr. Thomas, you're a researcher about internet and AI-related issues, but you yourself were also in the industry. I'm still in the industry, but just in a different way. All right, so your perspective. So there's, there's no way that I can compete with this brain power on researcher governance. So I would say where I'm most focused today is a slightly different perspective. It's about the supply chain and the ability of the technology industry to actually deliver the innovations that are being promised. We've developed this almost mythical, mythical faith that the technology industry will just advance and every imaginary thing that we want to happen will just happen. And then it's actually our job as regulators to make sure that nothing bad happens from that. But we are a really long way away from getting the benefits of AI. Let's go to Mr. Song. Uh, as a professor and uh, president, president of a university, of course, I look at this issue from the jobs we do at a, the u university because the governance of in artificial intelligence comes from ethics, moral issue, regulatory to uh, legal issues. But at, at a u university, our job is to nurture talents and good citizens. Uh, and uh, uh, so there are, say, for example, the issue is just the use of chat GPT at the u universities and there are different policies uh, uh, and whether they have skills to use it. And also, the, actually, whether you have access to chat GPT. This is just a very simple example. You can see right from the uh, literacy, AI literacy to the ethics you use chat GPT for your homework, or, 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 and also the digital divide caused just by access to those uh, technology, uh, even just at the university. So those, you can go beyond the university. So, so it is the AI for education, AI for research, AI education for younger generations. I'm look at it from our part. part so one is AI literacy among the public. The other is how AI is applied in education. Well, at the same time, what is the right way to nourish your students so that they can benefit from AI? AI. Thank you so much, Professor Zhu. Let me first uh, introduce what I'm doing now. First is um, uh, the professor of uh, public policy. Uh, but also, I'm running a uh, research institute for science and technology development and governance. Uh, this institute, research institute, not only research on AI, such as uh, the uh, information technology, but also for bioscience and also other high-tech uh, uh, technologies. Therefore, I'm the, not only for AI governance expert, but also for the uh, like, uh, uh, science and technology policy expert. So I, I, I will talk about something about the maybe general public policy for science and technology later. Let's go to Mr. Secretary General first, since you already have said that back in 2019, you and you got your colleagues already work on that. Yeah, I indeed we did. And, and I mean, there was uh, an agreement through the G20 of uh, a set of international standards at that time. But bear in mind, this is, you know, a rapidly evolving area. And it's, it's important to keep evolving as the challenges and opportunities change. And I take the point, uh, you know, we need to have uh, like a viable and, and successful and profitable industry rather than sort of regulated out of existence. But by the same token, uh, this, I mean, the, the potential risks are so significant that it is, of course, um, incumbent on policymakers and governments around the world, jurisdictions around the world, to, to make decisions to uh, ensure that the development and the diffusion and the use of this uh, exciting technology uh, can be made as safe and as responsible uh, as possible. And, and, you know, the EU, China, uh, jurisdictions uh, around the world are making their best attempts at this point, but I suspect that there will be an ongoing and 
I hope that there will be an ongoing international conversation on how uh, this can be further pursued and further refined and further developed uh, in, an, in an appropriately coordinated, globally coordinated way. And certainly from the OECD's point of view, we, we very much stand ready to be part of that conversation and to provide inputs based on our experiences uh, in the past. So let's go to you also, uh, Ms. Dong, since you earlier talked about the governance side of, among governments. What is your take on you know, some of the earlier examples I mentioned? And what do you think is a good way for international conversations, barring words coming from uh, uh, Mr. Secretary General? Uh, yes, just now you mentioned about the United Nations has just adopted a resolution. The name of the title of this resolution is actually Seizing the Opportunity of Safe, Secure, Trustworthy uh, AI Technology to Promote Sustainable Development. And this resolution was adopted uh, uh, by consensus and it has a positive role to play to promote sustainable development under the UN framework. China took an active part uh, in the uh, consultation process and we have made important contribution in terms of making this resolution more balanced and more reflective of the concerns and needs of developing countries. And um, we, we, China joined the consensus and co-sponsored this resolution. However, there, there is, from China's perspective, also uh, some room for improvement. For, exa for example, this resolution um, does not kind of uh, um, mention enough about this uh, AI and digital device and about the importance of capacity building for developing countries in benefiting from the AI development. Uh, Christopher, maybe you want to come in as an uh, industry insider on uh, whether some of these uh, intergovernmental or uh, governmental uh, or national rules that are already existing are inclusive enough or uh, efficient enough and equal enough uh, to the industries. One is we have enormous technological problems that we need to solve, just really, really hard technology problems we need to solve. And that just requires really, really smart people to have a really lot of money and a lot of time to solve them. And actually, we figured out how to do that before around the world as one globe. We figured it out in 3G, we figured it out in other industries, but we are actually moving backwards in that area. I couldn't agree more that we should have one global supply chain for AI technology. And I would love all of the great semiconductor technology of the United States to flow into China. And I would like every US internet company to have unfettered, no firewall access to the Chinese consumer. So we know how to do this. What we need is more scientists, more researchers, more money, more innovation. And it's the countries represented in this room and it's the young people of China who can help do that. That's number one. That's really business and technology. Number two is uh, we need a industrial structure that gets the benefits of AI out to every country within a legal framework that makes sense for that country. And one part of that will be obviously as the technology gets cheaper, there'll be more and more incentive, more and more companies will look to try to sell it and bring solutions and all of that stuff. And again, what we can't have is a bunch of barriers and restrictions and weird stuff because I, I actually think very clearly, I was in Saudi Arabia for Leap and you know, Global South or whatever, they don't care where the technology comes from, they want it. And if it comes from China, great. If it comes from the US, great, that's great. We all need to have open access to these markets. There's just not enough. And, and that is something, but we're not gonna solve every problem. And many countries don't have the institutional framework in place to do anything. So how are they gonna do something for it? And, but that's number two. Uh, and then the third one though is actually the one we haven't talked about, which is existential risk to humanity from AI. Uh, which is not about like rich versus poor, it's us versus the machines. And um, I tend to think that risk is less, but we sure as heck should be having talks at the, at the very senior national security level between the leading countries on how to solve this, and those talks aren't happening.
Mr. Liu is also an industry insider. Your thoughts? Uh, actually, the, you know, uh, we are working on provide uh, AI-related products and uh, services to our customers. So, for example, we build our uh, we build our the large language model uh, and uh, provide uh, the the local application on our device, uh, like the chat GPT for for consumers. So. At that moment, uh, we are thinking about uh, one question. Actually, it's a big challenge to us, since uh, if we are going to provide uh, AI-related products or services, we must must make sure we should provide uh, good uh, good products or services at the same time to protect the privacy of consumer. So we are thinking about uh, okay what uh, technology should uh, end control to make sure no the the data leak no the 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 uh, the some other bad issues on the device using the new technology to get the personal data or something like that at the same time we think okay we should we must make sure the new Technology of AI should benefit uh, certain the the customs like the 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 deaf, like the, some other the, the the people. The we we think the the technology for good is our most important thing. So uh, everything should have the two side, the good side and bad side. For the the AI, we also see the good side is. Uh, the most uh, uh, new the uh, images and the bad side is uh, maybe some bad guy will utilize it yeah. to that's, that's why the, we need to have AI yeah, that's exactly why we are yes. discussing it uh, professor Zhu, tell me what are your thoughts uh, recently i did a, a research on international uh, comparative research on ai governance policies uh, surrounding the world uh, including 62 countries uh, especially for OECD countries and also other, other big countries, and uh, including uh, over 300 uh, policy documents. So uh, as our, our research is, uh, there are four factors uh, uh, to uh, you know, the, uh, in, impact the uh, result of the AI governance of a country. The first is the innovative capacity. The second is uh, the population uh, structure. Third is capital and the labor uh, relations. The final one is social norms. Uh, because this is a research on understanding and explaining the nation for the AI governance policy decision making. Therefore, for our general people, we must uh, rationally observe different countries' behavior and the decision making process. Mm -hmm. And also, no one is irrational. Every country is rational. So the, we, that's why we need AI global governance and we need international organizations such mm -hmm. as the U United Nations well to, said. To, to, to contain every rational and uh, collective actions. Actually, uh, you know, setting higher level of uh, declaration on uh, you know, AI safety or governance is important. But uh, I think more important uh, thing we should discuss and said is we need more specific and practical regulations on AI systems because currently the frontier models or foundation models are rolling out. It's working in our daily life and it can affect, it can affect our daily life and economies, and also the political issues as well, right? It's imminent threat. So what kind of standard and regulations we can set to those kind of uh, machines before deploying out to the, uh, the market? So that is one thing. Second, uh, regarding the, uh, the global governance, I think it is very good Many different, you know, uh, discussions are happening these days. 
Okay? Because the, the AI system developed by a specific company or country can make global effect and can treat the humanity as a whole. So it is not a matter of uh, one country or one, one company. We need to work together. All world, world should work together and discuss the solution, right? So in that sense, it is very good. Many different sectors may have many different initia 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 initiations for discussions on AI safety and regulations. And one good example is that Last year, um, the, at the uh, uh, Bletchley Park, UK, there was an AI summit, and more than 30 countries, the leaders of more than 30 countries have gathered, as well as most of the big AI tech leaders get together and discuss what kind of uh, ways we can secure the AI safety and make a consensus on making standard on AI safety testing. For example, there were issues like deep fake. There was also issues like uh, misinformation that are plaguing our society these days. And therefore, what kind of standards we should have? I think every stakeholder has a say. Uh, just for your information, it's not an advertisement, by the way. With my home organization, uh, China Media Group, also put out the latestly the first uh, um, uh, standards, at least for all of us working for it as a media worker, to have open, proactive, and prudent manners. But all of these are adjectives that needs to be more filled in with the specific case studies and the regulations. So that's just one of those examples that we are working on, I guess, across sectors. What about for you, um, uh, to our professor from Macau, uh, what are you doing as an educator? Yeah, education play a critical role in this exercise. We know that. So what exactly are you doing so, for that? So first of all, we need to get AI education for all, uh, for different uh, background, different uh, age, different uh, sectors. Right from the schools, we need this, the school pupils to start to understand the basics of AI and what, uh, it, is, what it is and what's the impact what are the ethics uh, and, uh, and uh, moral issues. Mm -hmm. And build up that, of course, as a university, we need to make AI education as a compulsory general education for all, whether you are a scientist, whether you are humanities, uh, social science, and you, you need to understand, first of all, before you comment on it, before you use it, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it could be done beyond that, and we make this as a training course mm -hmm. for the community. And for them to come, whether you are a government servant or, or, or working in right. the company and, and as a training course. And of course, this is not just for one university. We need, so last year, and uh, we established together with top universities in China, uh, 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 other places, uh, have a uh, world alliance for digital and intelligent education to to, to, to for that. Right. So, so that is, I think, the first thing we need to do more uh, uh, and for, for a, a, a education of AI. Okay. Yeah. I see you're trying to promote le media, sorry, AI literacy, yeah. and also be able to empower the public uh, during this process of discussion. One sentence from every one of you, what is the key global AI governance? Professor Zhu. Only drivers for human Civilization is energy technology, not something like uh, AI or something like that. Thank you very much. Don't, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry, yeah. be happy. So, Professor Song. Uh. I'm here to call upon the government, the industry, and the uh, international organizations to support the universities working together. Okay. Uh, there is a big difficulty now across just for student movement and uh, factor mobility and so on and so forth. Uh, if you're in the semiconductor industry, you need to be an optimist. I'm a technology optimist, and I refuse, and to quote another uh, Richard Wright, 
I refuse to believe in the end of man. I believe man will not only survive, but man will thrive. Okay. And that AI will be another tool we use to thrive. Uh, the crucial of the AI governance uh, is kind of the uh, value, uh, value alignment and also technology for good. Uh, let's, let's manage all the risks together so we can seize all the benefits together. The word multilateralism with the UN at the center, which involves major countries' coordination and cooperation okay. while respecting the rights and interests of developing countries. Thank you. Professor Li. Okay, let's think, discuss, and work together. We can solve it. All right. I heard many times together. I guess uh, only with that, we will be able to at least achieve some milestones along the way. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I think this is a very wonderful discussion. For, thank you for your insights and input.